Hi, I'm Steve from the Stone Crafting Workshop, welcome. Uh, today I'm going to do something unusual for me. I'm going to do a review of this little mini oven. It's the Salter 9L toaster oven. I bought it from Robert Dias in a sale. It cost me less than £20. And I bought it for use in my workshop. Uh, so, but first of all, we'll go through the functions and the features. I'll you know, toast a bit of it and bake a potato to see how it all works. And then I'll tell you why I want it for the workshop. And no, <laughs> it's not so I can heat up pies and pasties, although I clearly have a, a lifetime interest in such things. This is for crafting purposes. And uh, we'll go through that afterwards. So the instructions recommend that you turn this on for 15 minutes at full temperature to get rid of any residue uh, left on the component parts. There was a little bit of smoking, tiny bit of smoking when it first started, but it's all functioning now. I've put a thermostat, an oven thermostat inside. I thought it'd be interesting to see what temperature it gets up to. The temperature dial on the right hand side, on the upper right hand side, uh, actually says that it goes up to 230 degrees centigrade. So let's see, let's see what we After get. just 10 minutes, it's up to 180 degrees and still climbing. So it heats up pretty quick. If you look at the front of the oven, on the right hand side are the two dials. The top dial is the temperature setting and the bottom dial is the timer. The instructions say you shouldn't force the timer, the timer round to zero when you finish. You have to let it run down naturally. I guess you can just simply turn the heat off and leave the timer ticking away. You can hear it ticking. I actually quite like that. So the 15 minutes is very nearly up and we're well over 230 degrees. It's about 200 and... Hold on a tick. It's nearly 250 degrees. So that's quite impressive. I mean, it's really quick temperature rise. While it's cooling down, the oven comes equipped with a small tray that's in the bottom rack and a wire grid which you can fit in the top rack if you so desire. I'm going to, first of all let's try toasting a bit of bread. It's frozen, homemade wholemeal bread. I've just read the instructions. I've got a feeling I should take the tray out <laughs> and leave the door open. Well, you're not dealing with Fanny Craddock here, so stop complaining. I'm hoping that you'll hear the timer ding. There. The timer bell has gone off. That, the toast is almost done. I would say it is done, actually. It's taken ten minutes, which I think is quite a long time for a piece of toast. <laughs> If I was in a bed sit waiting for me toasted for breakfast, I wouldn't be hugely happy. But it's done it. Okay. And it does it both sides. Which hadn't occurred to me. Except, unless of course you think about it logically. I'm going to do a baked potato now. I'm just going to put it on. Cold, stone cold potato. Just put it in the tray, I think. Let's put the temperature up to maximum and the timer for 30 minutes, which is the maximum time you can set the timer to, 30 minutes. I'm now going to have my cup of coffee and my slice of toast. <laughs> See you in a bit. Right, we're coming up for 45 minutes with the baked potato. Uh, set it on for another 15 minutes, obviously. I wonder if it'll be cooked. It certainly looks cooked. Oh my god, gosh, it is cooked. Like that. So that's the oven working as you can see it actually does work 
What about the construction of it? Well, for 20 quid, it's pretty much what you'd expect. It's fairly tinny. The outer casing gets quite hot, so you wouldn't want to use it around children. And you certainly wouldn't want to use it, I don't think, for an elderly person. Um, but it, it works well and it heats up quick. It's simple to use. So, as an oven, I think it's okay and I think it's really good value for money. But I didn't buy it as, as an oven to use in a kitchen. I bought it for use in my workshop for crafting purposes and for baking uh, polymer clays like Fimo and Sculpey and for use with low temperature enamels and um, for that purpose I think it's going to be excellent what I'm going to do now I'm going to put on I've made <laughs> while I was sitting for the half an hour 45 minutes I, I made <laughs> three little um, doodars out of the uh, various clays it's not my thing this making things out of uh, clay but um, it'll do for a test I'm going to let that cool down for a few minutes and then I'm going to put these in the oven and the temperature is up to 110, 20 just a tad over 130 degrees so now I'm going to put my little clay pieces in little masterpieces of art of clay modelling ho ho set the timer for 20 minutes and the temperature is already set for 130 degrees. I'll check that in five minutes time just to see how things are progressing. While this is cooking away, the reason I chose this oven and wanted this particular oven was because first of all it's very small, it's got a tiny footprint, it won't take up a lot of space in the workshop. It has a temperature control on it, which a lot of these small mini ovens don't seem to have. A thermostatic control. Surprises me a bit, but that, that's the case. It's got the timer, which is pretty handy because, in theory, I could put some um, crafting bits and pieces in the oven, set the timer, and just walk away and just forget it. And also because it was cheap. At 20 quid, I was looking at second hand mini ovens and I was struggling to get anything at that price. So, all in all, I reckon this is a good package. Uh, sort of three or four minutes in, and as you can see, the temperature is climbing up just over 150 degrees. So, I'm just going to turn the thermostat down a tad. I can see that one of the pieces, the thin yellow sculpy fish that I made, uh, where it's very thin, it's actually starting to burn. So, I've opened the door, I've let the temperature drop a bit, it's now reading 125 degrees. I've turned the thermostat down a bit and I'm just going to close the door and see how it goes. Clearly, as a crafting oven, it's going to take a bit of playing with and testing. But, um, oh come. Before I show you this, let me say and point out that I've never done this before. <laughs> and there they are. There's the two Sculpey clay um, pieces, and I've burned them. Burnt to a crisp. <laughs> so what I think um, I'm going to have to practice with the heat control. So I've reset the temperature control to 120 degrees here. And it's actually holding at exactly 130 degrees in the oven itself. And the, the, what's left in there now is the little piece of blue Fimo clay I made up. So that's, that's, that's promising.
So the temperature has again crept up to about 140 degrees. So what I shall do in the future is starting off at about 115 degrees and see how it goes. I can always turn it up a little bit. So let's take the little blue Fimo piece out. And there's a little Fimo piece. That's worked fine. And now that they've cooled off, these two here have hardened up. So this this disaster with the fish is down to my ignorance about how to work these uh, sculpey clays. Never done it before. Um, the temperature control, I'm pretty sure I'll get to grips with that. That's actually not too bad. <laughs> Considering I did it while I was munching on toast and jam, at 20 quid, I reckon it's not bad. And it'll do me in the, um, in the workshop. I'm absolutely certain I'll get that right in future. I'll get the temperature control a bit better with a bit of practice. I've never ever used those clays before, so I'm new to it all. But um, I think it's a good little oven for the money. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy watching it, if there's some use to you, please give me a thumbs up. I quite like those. Uh, if you want to see me using this oven for crafting purposes, and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with it in future videos, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for watching.